Service now tool is one of the kind of tool what we called as a ticketing tool, guys. A ticket tool here. That's what we call it. But uh, it's not the only tool in the world. There are a lot of other tool as well which deal with the, this ticket part. Now, what is the importance? The people who has no knowledge on this ticketing tool, guys. All our work, every single work that we do in the project, guys, need to be tracked, guys. Need to be tracked using a ticket only, using the particular ticket only. Now, the tickets might be of three categories, guys. Basically, they come under three types here. One of them type is incident, guys. One of the type is incident here. The incident tickets are because of the process break, guys. When or there is a process break, guys, that means your job events. For example, your job events or transaction issues or transaction events as such, you'll be getting an incident ticket, guys. All the incidents will come under the basically SLA rules. They come under the SLA timelines, which I already explained in the previous class. Every ticket will be having a priority. Every priority ticket will have a time bound, guys. Some of them will be within the SLA of 15 minutes. Some of the uh, uh, tickets will be within the SLA of two hours or three hours as such as well. So every incident, guys, will be considered with the SLA here. That's what your tracking is. You'll be spending the time here. The second type is call your service request, guys. Service request here or service task, whatever you call it as. These are mostly the analysis request, guys. These are coming under most as the analysis request here. They do have SLA, guys, but not time bound. Okay, not a time bound like within one day you need to complete or within a two minutes you need to complete, but they have SLA within weeks of time. Even if you not close, guys, even if you not close also, you can put a reason. Okay, you can give a reason and then say that why you are not closing it. Maybe let's say you are doing some testing, guys, and you need some test data prepared by the some other application. Some other application, they need to pass the test data to you, and then you can do the testing cases. Now, other application is not responding or they are delaying the work, so you are waiting for them. Maybe you are waiting for an input from your own SME, and SME told that this is not a priority work. We'll see this later. So the SLA may go away for this service request, guys. But still, you can put a reason and no need to worry about that. But for incidents, guys, even you want to give a reason, they are not accepted, guys. SLA for incidents are very, very strict and they need to be solved it in time. There are service request tasks, guys. They will be helping you to do a lot of analysis. Low priority tickets, low priority work will be under service now, uh, under service request here. <clears throat> Apart from that, the third one, what you do in the part is, the change request guys these are called change requests or change tickets or simply we call them as crs in intro they ask you what is c uh, what are the crs that you did like that this is more like a change request guys changes to your code and you want to follow a different process no sla for them guys these are following the uh, priorities which one change goes to go first that you'll be working first the change that you need to do later you'll keep it later so this change request they don't go with any kind of forward guys <clears throat> now if it is an incident guys if it is an incident and if it is a service request guys if it is a service request here you'll be first seeing the status what is the status of these tickets as such anytime they have started guys when they start the current status will be open status okay anytime they start guys they'll come under the open status guys and as soon as you assign as soon as you assign the ticket guys you need to change the ticket to the in progress you need to change the status to in progress as soon as the ticket comes guys the sla time starts also guys as soon as the ticket comes the sla ticket time will start sometimes they will check to open to close time guys sometimes the sla will be counted for the timeline when it is open to when it is closed that is one kind of sla they will verify other kind of sla is how much time it was there in in progress status how much time it was there with you in in progress status as well now sometimes what happens when you are working you may need some input sometimes you may need the customer approval let's say you have solved a task there's an online transaction issue customer raised a ticket you solve the request guys you already solve the request but you need the customer confirmation to close the ticket now do you ask for the customer confirmation can i close this ticket the user has not responded guys the customer is not responding you don't need to keep in in progress because the time bomb is ticking right 
So what you do is when you are in request of inputs, when you need uh, required of more inputs, guys, you can set the status to pending or hold. Either cases in pending will be the one which to use. <clears throat> when you set the ticket to pending, guys, the in progress SLA will be stopped. Like I said, some application they don't care whether it is in in progress or pending. As soon as the when ticket start to when the ticket close, they will check the whole SLA. But some application they see till what time you are having the in progress status under your SLA. If it is a pending, they won't count it because you are waiting for confirmations. Maybe waiting for the confirmations, guys. Waiting for the confirmation. Maybe you have uh, solved an event and you restarted the job. The job may take three hours to complete. Let's assume that your job is supposed to complete in three hours. Now you cannot keep an urgent ticket for three hours open, right? You can set it for pending status and saying that waiting for the job to be completed. Like that, you can change the status from in progress to pending here. And if there is no pending request, guys, when it is resolved here, of course, the status should be resolved as well. The status should be resolved, guys. Once the ticket is resolved, guys, that is your end of the work. The close of the ticket, guys, the close will be done in two ways. One, the customer can close it. Customer who opened it, guys, he can close it manually. Or the second option is the ticket will be auto closed in seven days, guys. It will close in seven days automatically as well. So based on the incident or service request, this is the status that happens, guys. But not the same with the change request, not the same with the change request. So before I go to the change request, any questions in the ticket, guys? Any questions in your task or status of your tickets? In interview, when you are giving the answer related to a ticket, guys, use proper words. You will not close the ticket, guys. You will not close the ticket yourself. It should be closed by the customer who opened it or the ticket should be closed automatically by the system in next seven days. In any case, guys, in any case, this is what the problem is. In any case, if the customer <coughs> reopens the ticket, guys, this is a big issue for that. The questions will come from your management that, Anil, why you close the ticket without the user confirmation? That's what the problem happens when you resolve the ticket without the confirmations, guys. If it is a job event, you just need to confirm by the job completion. Once the job is completed, you can close the ticket. No confirmation required. But if it is a customer request or a customer transaction, then you need to ping the customer and say that I have resolved the issue. Can you check it? Can you verify it? Can I close the ticket? If he say yes, then you can close the ticket, guys. That's what you need to do. Without the confirmation, if you close in hasty, lot of <coughs> new developers, guys, lot of new uh, joinees, they will tend to close the ticket fast and they make mistake. You can close the ticket. Closing the ticket is what your ultimate task, guys. But don't go hasty on closing the ticket. This is just an advice. In the production environment, you need confirmations to close the ticket, guys. Even if it is a small to small request also, don't take your self decisions. Don't say that, okay, Anil, this is a small thing only. Why I need for confirmation? Sometimes small things will turn into big autom automatically, guys. <laughs> Instantly. Small things will change into big things. So you don't want to fall into that small things to big guys. Anytime you have a ticket, try to close it in time with proper confirmations. If you're not getting confirmations and you want to close it, talk to your lead. Go and put the point to the lead saying that there's a ticket, but I'm not getting any confirmation. What shall I do? Your lead may say that Anil, let's degrade the ticket. If it is priority two and your timeline is about to end, make the priority to three so that you get more time. You can mention the reason that we are waiting for the customer approvals and we are not getting it. So instead of reaching the SLA, we are degrading the priority. That is another way why you are closing the ticket without confirmation. So follow the process of your ticketing, guys. This is very important. Only by tickets we can know what work you are doing, guys. Your manager will not come and ask Anil what work you are doing. By seeing the ticket, he knows. Your client counterpoint client guys, when they be giving the billing, when they're giving the hours of amount guys, they will not check the emails. They will not check what you're doing personally. They will only check what tickets you work, how much ticket you have worked as such. They will count like that. <coughs> Sorry, based on your work only guys, they'll give you the amount of money for your project, right? So any questions in incident and service request part guys? Any questions in that?
Now, change request doesn't fall into this sequence, guys. Change request when you start, guys, when you start, it will be in new status. It will be in the status of new, guys. It will be in the status of new. And then when you start, guys, it will be in the uh, stage part. There will be stage area here. This is the place where you will be doing the coding, testing, and again, instead of stage, I'll say it for in progress only for you also. In progress only here. This is the place where you will be doing the coding, testing, and everything, guys. Review part, everything here, and you'll be getting the review comments and everything as such. Once your coding, testing, everything is completed, guys, then the next stage when you want to move the code into the productions, then you need to request for the approvals, guys. Then you need to raise the request for the approvals here. The status will be in access status, guys. Once all the approvals, once all the approvals will come here, then it will be changing the status to approve. Only when it is approved, guys, then you'll go for the implementation status. When you go for the implementation status, guys, unless the ticket is in implementation, you should not uh, apply to production, guys. Understand the project when you are in the change and uh, version control tool, and when you are implementing the package, guys. Once the package is approved, then only the code will go to production that you know. But the package approval will be done by your SMEs or the technical owner who is there for your project, right? <coughs> they will verify first. They will verify that is the ticket is in the implementation status or not. Is the ticket, the change request has been approved or not? They will verify these things. And you will be taking the approvals, guys. You will be also having an email approvals as such. Attach them. Attach those emails. To your ticket guys attach these approval mails to your ticket as well and when the sme or your uh, technical team they want to uh, implement the package guys when they want to approve the package they will check the status of the ticket is in implementation status or not if it is implementation only then they will approve the package guys if not they won't touch it at all once the package is approved, guys, then you'll be having the status for review. That means the change has been implementation. You need to do the post production validation, guys. Post production validation should be done here. You may need to take some screenshot that your job is successful. Okay, take the screenshot of the job successful or the report or any email confirmation from the customers. Okay, again, you can say that your report has been created in the production. This is the first report. Can you verify it and confirm me that everything is good? Your customer has to reply back saying that the report is all good. That is your confirmation of the production implementation. If it is only the bad job, let's say you did only the space increase, guys. You made a space change or a part of a new file added or a new step added in your JCL. You moved the code into the JCL into production and it ran successfully on day one. Then that is your screenshot. So take the post production validation, guys. Prepare a documentation. Attach this documentation to this ticket and then you need to close the ticket as well. You need to close the change request in this particular way. Now, if there is any problem and anything you need to do backward, guys, when you want to do backward changes or you want to do any other changes, you need to open another change request. You cannot open a change request is already closed, guys. You cannot do this one. You cannot reopen a change request. Any other changes, the second change that you do, maybe there was an issue in the production move, you want to uh, back out the changes, you need to create another change request and then do the back out, guys. But an incident, if it is not resolved, they can reopen, guys. A service record that is not completed and you closed it, they can reopen. A change request cannot be reopened, guys, once it is changes has been implemented as such. Once the approval is done, you cannot go back to the previous status at all. So this is about the service now tool, guys. In the service now tool, in your answers, guys, in the interview answers, in the interview answers, for any answer, for any answer, let's say there is a job event. So what you do in telling the answer that <clears throat> whenever there is a job event, we'll be getting a ticket. That's your first answer. That's the first way to refer to this tool, guys, to refer to this particular tool. When you say that whenever there is a job event, you'll be getting a ticket. That's first point. At the same time, you'll tell that after I resolve the event, after I resolve my job event, I will close the ticket. I'll resolve the ticket with the details. When you're resolving, guys, you'll be mentioning the notes, how you resolved as well. The resolution details, guys. 
the resolution details you need to mention properly and then close the ticket as such. So in your answer of any job event, you need to mention that there will be a ticket and you'll be closing the ticket after the job is successfully completed. In any of your change request answer, when you're telling that you did a code change, you will be saying that we'll be having a change request after the coding. We'll get the approvals in the change request and once in the implementation stage, the change request will be approved and then implemented. So you'll be using proper words in all your examples, guys. Nobody will ask you directly explain you service now ticket tool. Maybe not. They will not be asking you that question but you will be taking the chance of telling the answer such a way that you will be putting the words, proper words in proper place so that the interviewer will know that, okay, this person has knowledge of project process. How I do it in project, he's telling the same answer. I can take this point in a positive way. So this is about one of the tools that I want to cover in the last class. So any questions on this one, guys? Now, I want to add second point of the story, guys. Now, this tool is very famous when you are working in a support and maintenance project, guys. Support and a maintenance project here. This is very much a very good particular tool what we use in every project. Apart from this, guys, if it is purely a development project, guys, or any kind of enhancement projects, maintenance work, guys, they generally do between the 40 to 80 hours work, guys. Generally, this support and maintenance work will be around 40 to 80 hours of change request will do over here. But if it is 120 hours or 200 hours, 600 hours of work, 800 hours of change request is there, 1000 hours of work is given to us, they come under enhancement part of the story, guys. In this kind of projects, in this kind of big projects, let's like this, okay, big development projects here, we don't, we'll be tracking, we don't track by the service now, guys. There will be, uh, other tools will be there. I 